So hello and welcome. My name's Steve Nabell and today I'm speaking with Amelia Kincaid on Whispers from the Wild. Now Amelia is one of the world's most renowned animal communicators. She has brought thousands into closer contact with her beloved dogs, cats, birds and horses and more. Now she shares the wonder of her recent work communicating with the wild and in some case endangered animals. She takes readers on a ride where she visits tigers, elephants, lions, great white sharks and even black mamba snakes and whales and bees. She's traveling all over the world. I know Amelia well. She, I know she travels a lot. And here today she's revealing some of the inner thoughts and feelings of a number of extraordinary animal communications. So hi Amelia. Hi, Steve. I'm so delighted to, to be speaking with you now. Oh, it's a pleasure. And I, oh, I should mention that your website is languageofmiraclesinstitute.com and we'll be putting a link with the podcast so uh, people Brilliant. can connect with you. So, let me how did it all begin? You, you, didn't, you weren't born wanting to be a vet or a community. What, what happened? How did you get oh, into this? Goodness. Well, I'll tell you, my, my first book is called Straight from the Horse's Mouth and it's available now in about, last count was, I think, 33 countries. And um, it's a crazy and long story, but I will try to give you the shortest version that I can. Okay. I think the reason that I can write about this and teach it is because I didn't, I didn't know that this was even possible. I di I wasn't born psychic, or I didn't think I was. When I discovered this, and I think the reason that I can teach it and write it, it in such you know, complicated terms in such uh, in-depth terms is that I came upon it as a witness. I and so, and coming from a, a, a background where my mother was a radiation biologist and molecular chemist, things needed to have an explanation in my household. And I was working as an actress and a dancer in mm -hmm. Hollywood. Hmm. I had absolutely no idea that anyone could talk to animals. I, I had never met anyone who was an animal psychic. Now, this was 30 years ago, so this was quite a while ago, and it wasn't as mainstream as it is now. Now, there are so many different kinds of pop culture references. The, the word horse whisperer didn't even exist at the time, and now we've got, you know, the dog whisperer and all these different shows. Hmm. So I discovered it in a workshop, and a woman had come to town who was going from one vet's office to another, solving the problems that the vets couldn't solve. Hmm. And this is now one of my jobs, as well as training vets all over the world. I mean, it's incredible and such an honor that I have doctors coming to me as well, uh, wanting to learn What's the next step? You know, we've been to med school. We've learned everything that our predecessors could teach us. What do we do now? And when I was called upon to communicate with a dog, I think one of my, um, one of my advantages, and, and you of all people would understand this, was that I had been a meditator since I was eight or nine years old. As, as a child, I would meditate every night. And I didn't realize at the time what an advantage that was going to give me. Because when we're called upon, and now I call upon my students, to find a sacred silence, to, to move into a part of yourself that I call the still point, which is in your heart, your solar plexus. Um, in Tai Chi, it's even lower. It's, it's in the belly, the Dong Tian. But when we're moving into this part of our body where there's, there's no mind, there's nothing but peace and silence and grace and beauty and gratitude and awe, and we learn how to silence the turbulent emotions, then the trick is how do, how do you get online? Once you are online with God, Goddess, all that is, the divine creator, all of his creations are available to you by means of a quantum process. And that quantum process is extending this, this beam of, of unconditional love, this lightning out of your soul, connecting with the soul of that animal, and then being able to actually have a conversation, see what the world would be like through their point of view. And I also 
I feel now, in retrospect, because I had been a dancer, I was trained as a ballerina, all of those hours of silent concentration allowed me to be able to silently concentrate on something else. And as a dancer, you're concentrating on the choreographer. I mean, mm-hmm. And then as you're performing, you're concentrating on the music. But every animal has his own music, his or her own song. And they're sending out frequency into the world around them, just like a, a radio station. Or in this case, the analogy is, is the Internet. You know, every single animal is online. They're waiting for the humans to get online. Mm. And when we learn how to get online, then it's as if you get that animal's email address. Mm. And they can contact you because we're all connected on a web of light called the zero-point energy field. Mm. And once we gain access to the field, we can navigate through the field and go anywhere we want. Even from that animal to the animal they miss who's in heaven to the grandmother from Italy, you know, named Mary Rose or whatever that information is, Mm. then I end up traveling through, it's like a star system, it's like a galaxy, from one animal to the spirit in the house, to the humans who are in heaven, to the humans commenting on the new baby that's about to be born, and we have access to so much more information when we learn that we're, we're much, much more than our mind and personality. In, in your communications, it seemed like reading the book, I've heard uh, a number of people talk about animals having hive minds or collective minds, but you, you, you seem to write and, and talk in these conversations as if they're very more individualistic with their own personalities. Very, very much so. I mean, the idea that the human ape, we are one of five types of apes. The idea that we are so different and superior is something that simply must be outgrown. I mean, in order to champion the animals on this planet and to understand how precious these treasures are, one of the first things that we do is eliminate the hierarchy. Mm. I've had conversations with gorilla, you know, lions, tigers, as as you mentioned, a few, leopards, snakes, Butterflies, bees, uh, parrots, ferrets, frogs, everything under the sun. Mm. And what I find is that the idea of the collective soul, if anybody has a collective soul, it's the humans. Mm. Because they seem to be so bent on destruction. Mm. And with your work and with my work, when we're, we're aligning with this more beautiful potential, this this incredibly beautiful potential that the human beings have and that they're not expressing fully and now more and more children that are born are are coming in of this higher mind and they're much more conscious of animals and the environment they're they're really on fire helping to save the planet and that's what we're counting on so if someone cannot communicate with a dog how dare that person be able to judge the intelligence? Unless you know what a, a frog is capable of, or a shark, or a penguin, unless you can talk to them and hear their emotions and their point of view and feel their feelings, how would we be able to judge and say, we're better than? And mm-hmm. that's really what's happened with the planet, is that they're... There's this kind of cruel immaturity that seems to be driving the, the ship. Mm. And we have to change that. And you are really one of the pioneers out there on the front lines changing it. Yeah, I guess there's a few of us. Uh, uh, I mean, let me ask you, do you find that between the species there's differences in the way they communicate with you or what, they, what they're communicating? For example, would a snake communicate differently th- through a rhino or a lion or a cat or, well it's yeah it's it's very odd steve because what i'm talking about is is operating from the level of god now the creator who created everything has universal themes and every single being that i've ever tried to talk to has not only complex relationships and complex thought 
and deep, deep emotion, but far much more than we give them credit for, far much more than a lot of human beings do. Mm. A, a dog may love more deeply. A horse a horse loves more deeply. They never forget the ones that they love. They can tell me about a horse that got taken away 19 years ago. Um, the animals also have the, the personality, the mind, the way we do. And then they have this deep level of soul, mm. the way we do. Mm. And when we're connected to them so that we can actually channel them and do this reading, it's coming from a soul level. And in that soul level, all living beings are connected Mm. because it's not the level in which we're functioning as a particle. It's the level where we're functioning as a wave. And you take that even deeper, we're functioning as a field, a field of energy where you're a cell in the body of God, your dog is a cell in the body of God, every animal is a cell in the body of God, and operating from this more angelic viewpoint, this more loving and caring and nourishing and and comforting place, mm. we're able to listen, not just send out information, but listen. And that's how you could determine, is this a physical problem? Is this an emotional problem? Um, so often with animals, the, the symptoms are the same. And this is why it's so incredibly important to be able to tune into your cat and say, is this a tooth or is he grieving because his favorite other cat and their family just moved away? Mm. And you don't know that the family next door moved away and that his, his favorite cat is missing. Um, stomach problem, leukemia, I mean, all these things have similar symptoms. Mm. And when we're able to take in information, feel their feelings, see their thoughts, um, it's an entirely different world. The, the world becomes 10 million times more rich and beautiful yeah. because you're, you're in contact with the other living beings on the planet and they're in contact with you. Yeah. I remember some years ago you came and did a workshop at Alternatives and uh, we were having difficulties in our cat because we were moving and uh, I think you said, because the cat ran away back to the old house and I think you said, well, he has a girlfriend girlfriend and he wants wants not to leave her and actually I did go back several weeks later and I found him there and he showed me his girlfriend and then kind of turned his back on me and went off and and a a neighbor who lived there did tell us a year or so later there was lots of little we called him Frodo after the Lord of the Rings hero you know and there were lots of little Frodo's around uh, so he's He's, he's a, probably a great grandfather now, I imagine. But yeah, just I just I've never told you that, but uh, he did actually <laughs> and, show me the girlfriend. He, the, well, then mentioned. I must be reading you because I had completely forgotten about that, and that that example just flew out of my mouth. Yeah, I was amazing. Can I ask you? Because one of the things which is amazing, well, I found amazing about you as, as, as well as just general communicating with the animals is that you would speak with beings like great white sharks or poisonous spiders or snakes. Now, I would never probably want to get that close to a great white shark or even a poisonous spider. But you, it, it, are, is there any, any area where you feel a little bit edgy around these wild beings or you're completely fine with all of them? Well... It's, it's a different point of view. I mean, operating from that soulful level, you are love. We acknowledge that we are not our, our personality. It's not the you that you know yourself to be. That's not the part of the brain that can connect. Mm. It's the other hemisphere of the brain, the creative, the listening, the, the one that's connected to the universe. So that part wouldn't judge And I'm teaching a way of of not judging, not looking at the outside edges of things and sitting back in our body and judging the shape and, oh, it's this animal, they do this, it's that animal, they do that. Rather than you showing up with all your love, Hmm. being present with all your love without any prejudice, oh, this animal's scary or it's dangerous or it's it's ugly, I don't go there. I'll go to the shark and say, you are a goddess. And she was. She was the queen of the great white sharks. She was a goddess. And I'm acknowledging that they're all beautiful. They're all beautiful. 
and they're all wise and they're all full of wisdom treasure that we can learn if we tune into them mm. i mean i think the one animal and this will make you laugh because i do work with wild tigers mm. and i have worked with great white sharks and i have worked with the world's most dangerous and poisonous snakes the one animal that can be dangerous and people don't give it credit is dogs mm. dogs are wild animals mm. horses are wild animals and we, we take it for granted that they're domesticated and therefore they're not dangerous, mm. but they can be. We have to have great respect for their wildness. Do you, have you ever had an animal communicate its anger to you that's kind of like, I'm really angry or I'm a bit wild or I'm a bit ferocious or I'm going to attack someone because I'm angry, that kind of conversation? Yeah, I have. I have, and it was, it was with a tiger at... Uh, in, in Africa, and we were out with her. I mean, we were, were in a situation where we probably shouldn't have been. I was, I was visiting John Vardy's Tiger Sanctuary for the second time. He had, he had emailed me from ICU when one of his tigers attacked him, and I went the first time to communicate with Corbett to see what was going on and why he had gone off on John Vardy and the second time I went we were out with a group of people because there were tourists from another truck and there was a wild tigress and she had had cubs and she was saying don't come any closer and I, I kept calming her down I kept doing my calming signals which I teach in my online school and my, my webinars to get her feeling safe and comfortable saying we're not going to hurt you I'm just here to adore you. I'm just sending you love. There were a couple of times where she was struggling. She was on her feet, come, about to come after us. Yeah. And if I hadn't been able to calm her down, there was a, a guard there with a rifle who was ready to shoot her. So hmm. I don't know if John would give me credit for that moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know about that. But yeah, they do. And that is also something that we've got to honor. To be able to say, I understand that you're hurting. I understand that you're angry. I mean, every animal that I approach in a zoo, the first thing I'm going to say is, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for what the humans have done. And I'm coming in humble. I'm so sorry. How can I help you? Even if I'm only here just to send you love. Mm. The elephant who stepped on a landmine in, in Thailand and was standing on three feet. Mm. And I'm just here to to comfort you what can i do to make it better then we're moving into that divine mother place that divine father place that christ consciousness mm. and they do feel it even if all we can do is say i i'm here to love you to comfort you they do feel it when we send them that that love let me ask you about your work, because part of your work, I mean, is, is teaching people these skills. Can you say something about your workshops and what you teach people? Well, what is so incredible is that for the last, I've been, I mean, I discovered this 30 years ago. I started a world tour in 2001 when Straight from the Horse, Horse's Mouth was published in, in America and also in London. Hmm. And then... Um, Random House got it to HarperCollins in London. They got it to South Africa and Australia. And then it just kind of took off globally in all these different languages. But I started a world tour 19 years ago. I've been living out of a suitcase for 19 years. Mm. And I've taught in about 27 countries, I think, last count. Mm. And also, if you've read The Language of Miracles, I had the incredible honor of being invited to Buckingham Palace to work with the Queen's Horses. Mm. And that's the opening chapter of my second book, The Language of Miracles, which was mentored by the astronaut, Edgar Mitchell. As I'm teaching, what I find is that every single person who comes to one of my seminars, especially the ones who come in nervous and humble, and they're tearful, they want it so badly. When I put them in meditation, and this is a kind of prayer, you're praying to the soul of that animal. You know, please let me hear you. Let me see your point of view. Let me see inside your body even. Everyone can do it. Everyone has some level 
of intuition. Now, when I'm training my students, I'm training them to hone it. We want to be able to use those tools with dexterity. We want those tools available to us every time you reach for your intuition. It becomes like a new arm. And it stops being a random act, and it becomes a learned skill. It's deliberate. Mm. So it's a God-given gift. It's a part of our body. We all have it. But I can teach students what I'm doing now is fascinating. And we may, we may do this in Wales, because my next workshop is going to be in Wales on the 22nd of June. And I'm, I'm keeping the students on Monday if they want to go to a castle on the beach and have a little private training with me. But it's the 22nd and 23rd. Hmm. So they can find that information on the Language of Miracles Institute and also on AmeliaKincaid.com. We've been doing an exercise where we're tracking a dog in real time because by the time an animal goes missing and one of my students is called upon to find that missing animal, there's so much stress. You know, the, the owner's panicked and they're you don't want to be wrong, so your ego kicks in. And we've been, I put the, the students in meditation, they connect with the dog, they learn how to feel their feelings, look at their eyes, see their memories, see inside their bodies. Mm. And then we have the the guardian, I don't like the word owner, the, the dog's guardian, take the dog for a ride in the car. I keep the students in trance. I'm teaching them remote viewing. They're writing, 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 because we we use a a form of automatic writing to make this process circumvent the the ego. And they can all do it. Now, I've done it all over the world, and everyone can do it. And what I've found is that all human beings can remote view. And we didn't know we could remote view because we were taught that we can't. Mm. And it's the same thing with the the telepathic and the body scan and these different kinds of abilities that that we have not been taught that we have. I'm just doing the opposite. I'm teaching people that everyone can do it. Yeah. And I know you're doing safaris as well, aren't you? I am. And that, um, that safari is just about to close, but it's still open we have, uh, I only take eight people at a time. Mm. And when we go to Africa, it's there's a family. Now, the, the book is called Whispers from the Wild. And one of the chapters is about elephants. There's a family of five elephants that waits for me before the plane lands, before I know where I'm going to go. So I'll arrive at the airport in the, um, up in the bush. This is, this is in um, Zambia. And I'll have a big African guy come out in tears and say, Milady, Milady, we knew you were coming. The elephants are waiting around your tent. That's sometimes before I know what tent I'm going to be in. And then I go and get the key and find out that the elephants are there. Now, animals have always, this is their, their ancients, the elephants. Animals have always been able to telepath with each other. Mm. That's how they communicate. It's just the humans that have gotten off course and out of the harmonies of nature and when we're back in harmony we're back in a place of peace and adoration and grace then we're able to hear them and they're able to hear us so the safari takes place in the only the only resort in the world where the elephants walk through the lobby they come into the hotel and i always have thanksgiving day there with them in honor of them so that we can give thanks to be on a planet alongside such magnificence. And my my family of five elephants is the family who walks through this, this hotel. It's seven days, and it's the most marvelous experience. The lions know me, so the, the lions <laughs> sometimes mm. come out of the park and come over to my chalet, and then I have to tell them, no, 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 you can't do this, you've got to go back. Mm-hmm. I've had leopards bring their babies, I mean, newborn cubs to me. I mean, the magic that happens, and my group will also be of like mind. So we don't go into these safaris to 
take their picture and harass them. And we go, we go out in prayer in a state of, of grace, mm. and the animals come to the truck. And by you know, as a byproduct of that, my students get the most incredible pictures anybody's ever gotten. Also, because the expression on the animals' faces is so different. Mm. The, they're smiling. They do huge photo shoots for us after I connect and say, are you okay? Do you need anything? Can I help you? So the, the safaris are just like something out of a Disney movie. Wow. Well, I encourage all listeners to check out languageofmiraclesinstitute.com with um, Amelia. Now, of course, I could speak with you all day long, Amelia, and no, no doubt we'll be chatting after this, but... Uh, I just want to do a quote. Dr. Bernie Siegel, author of Love, Animals and Miracles, says, Amelia can revolutionize your thinking and ability to communicate with all other beings, all other living beings around you. And there's a number of other quotes. So her book is Whispers from the Wild. I'll be posting links from Amazon.co.uk and Amazon.com with this podcast. Amelia, as always, thank you so much for talking and to me. And I also just want to mention, if they, if people can't come to the the workshop, and I know they can't always find me in person. There is an online school, and on Language of Miracles Institute, there is a devotional program that offers 52 audio lessons. We'll have at least eight webinars. Students, animal lovers from all over the world are on, from South Korea to Australia, all over Europe, all over America, Canada, Mexico. It's bringing the world together in a new kind of community. Yeah. And that way they can learn and train, study at home, have the affirmations that they need for you and your soul, go straight to your phone every single day. And there's a new way to study in the privacy of your own home. So that's also an option for the people who, who can't make it to the Wales workshop. Brilliant. Thanks, Amelia. Thank you. I, I adore your work, and I sing your praises from the mountaintops. Oh, bless you. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Amelia. Lots of love.